Hey, welcome to Ranger Made Knives. In case you haven't guessed, we're going to be working on the lathe today. We're going to be turning a thumb stud out of zirconium for a liner lock folder. All right, jumping right into it, I'm going to talk real quick about my lathe setup. Now, I use a 5C collet chuck on my lathe for safety. I work with a lot of small parts close to the chuck and I just don't want those jaws swinging around by my hands. So what I'm showing here is how I mark my different bars. Uh, this is titanium and zirconium bar and I also use 416 and they all look the same. So you got to have some way of marking them. This is what I've come up with. Alright, so this is uh, probably the last stud I'll get out of this piece of quarter inch stock. And we're going to start out by facing this off. And you probably noticed I'm using a high-speed steel cutter for this. Zirconium is fairly soft, and the high-speed steel works just fine for it. And you get the added benefit of it's easy to shape. You'll see in a minute, I actually have a custom-shaped cutter that I use with a rounded nose. This is a small center drill. I think it's eighth inch overall diameter. Very tiny. And I center drill everything to make sure that, uh, that I have a good starting reference. This center drill, the tip is about 043, and my first drill, my minor diameter for my threaded hole, is going to be a number 54, so I get something very small to get started here. And there's the number 54 going into the chuck. And going back to zirconium being soft, it's soft but it's not gummy. And one of the things that, especially on a small twist drill like this, it can clog the flutes pretty fast. So I do a lot of peck drilling and a lot of clearing. I definitely don't want to have a twist drill broke off in the end of my zirconium. And this is where having a collet chuck really helps because you don't have to worry about busting your knuckles on the uh, jaws as they come flying around when you're clearing the flutes. Okay, so now that 54 hole is drilled, we're going to switch out to a eighth inch four flute carbide end mill. And for this operation, um, I need a precision depth, so I'm going to zero my tail stock, and when I bore, I'm going to bore to 25 thousandths. So I'll bring the tail stock up, put the end mill up against the stock, then I'm going to back off the quill on the tail stock and lock the tail stock down. That way when I start, I'm off the material, and when I start turning, I hit zero and the end mill starts cutting. Now I'm complete with all my boring operations, so now I'm going to start the turning. First thing I need to do is turn this stock down. This is quarter inch, and I like my thumb studs to be about 0.175 outside diameter. So we're going to take some off the outside of this. Uh, this is that custom high speed steel cutter that I use for this. I like that round nose for getting a good finish and you're going to see here in a little bit when I get ready to turn the stem down on the thumb stud that rounded nose gives me a nice radius back side of the head of the thumb stud. It's also important to note that uh, we're working with pretty small material so my depth of cut is not very big. I start out, I probably take a couple of 20,000 cuts and then I go down to about 10,000. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and take a measurement and see where we're at. Looks like I've got about another 25,000 to take off. And I should probably mention, I work to the precision that's necessary for the part. Uh, these thumb studs, they don't need to be exact, so if I hit within two or three thousandths of what I am looking for, that's plenty accurate for this.
All right, I've got the outside diameter. I'm going to switch the tool around and just take a quick little bevel cut on the edge. Now I'll just go ahead and clean up that edge with a small jeweler's file and some sandpaper. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a back cut. This is going to form the stem of the thumb stud. And that stem is going to be about 100 thousandths finish diameter. So I'm going to take very small cuts. Be real careful. I should also point out that I plunge in when I'm up against the thicker portion of the stock. And we'll go ahead and take another quick measurement. Again, shooting for right around 100,000. So it looks like I've probably got about another 10,000 to take off. And we'll just clean this up again with the jeweler's file and some sandpaper. And we're ready to part this thing off. I usually set my thumb studs at about 3 sixteenths of an inch in length, so that's uh, 0.1875. And I just use the dial caliper to set that using the depth gauge at the back of the dial caliper. This little tray keeps me from losing my thumb stud down into the lathe. They're really small and I've lost a few, so a little paper towel in there to uh, keep it from bouncing back out. Now it looks like a thumb stud. I will deburr the hole on the backside where we parted it off using a basically a carbide countersink in a pin vise. And then I'm going to go ahead and stick it in this extra drill chuck to hold it while I tap it. This drill press is dedicated to my tapmatic setup. This thumb stud is going to get tapped at 80 using a form tap running at about 500 RPM. Now just a little bit of cleanup and we're ready to heat color this thing.
I use a MAP torch. Propane works just as well. And the, my process is I heat it three times to yellow, bright yellow, and let it cool back down. And I find that doing three heats gives me a nice, thick, durable oxide layer. All right, now we're going to go ahead and cut the insert material. This is a probably a 50-year-old micarta that I cut out of a block. Right, now I'm going to super glue that piece of micarta to the end of a carbide rod and the carbide gives me basically a guide for shaping the micarta and that's eighth inch diameter which is going to fit into that little pocket that we created on the top of the thumb stud. quick blast of super glue accelerant and then we're on to the disc sander now I start on the horizontal disc mostly because it has coarse paper already on it and if you watch you can see how I start to use the carbide rod as a guide to getting my my cart around now it's important not to let this heat up too much because super glue releases with heat I think somewhere around 230 240 degrees the super glue will let go so don't let it get too hot. Then I move over to the vertical disc, uh, mostly because it's got finer paper. Either disc will work. And again, I'm just pushing the rod flat against the disc and spinning it, which cuts a nice cylindrical piece of micarta. And then I need to take the thickness down. The Remember the depth of that pocket is 25 thousandths. So I'm going to bring this down to right around 35 thousandths and have about 10 thousandths stick out on this. Next I just want to clean up the uh, face and put a little radius on the edge of this. So what I do is I chuck up that carbide rod in my Fordham hand tool and then I spin it on the paper. I'll start with 1000 grit and then I'll go to 2500 grit. The 2500 grit leaves a really nice satin finish, but we're going to go ahead and polish this up. A little green rouge on the sewn wheel and some pink scratchless on the loose wheel. Remember I mentioned that the super glue breaks down with heat. Using the carbide and uh, the fact that the super glue breaks down with heat really works to my advantage here and all I do is I heat up the rod to just a dull glow in the middle and I let the conductivity carry enough heat out to the edge. You see that little smoke? That's the super glue burning off. And then I just take a pair of tweezers and take it right off. All right now this knife is actually my EDC. 
This is one of my Freelancer XLs, and this is not the knife that this thumb stud will be installed on. Uh, I just took my thumb stud off so I could demonstrate this process. The knife that this is going on isn't finished yet. Um, so anyway, it gets attached with a counterboard odd 80 screw, and then we'll go ahead and install the insert using some super glue. And you'll see, I'm always trying to be careful not to get the little super glue stringers on my knives and my parts. So you'll see me kind of dip and shake and, and move things around just to try to prevent those stringers from laying across my materials. Then using a toothpick, put a little bit, kind of smear it around inside the uh, pocket on the thumb stud and we'll be ready to go ahead and drop that insert into it. Again, got to be careful. There's a little bit of dirt on the end of the tweezers. That'll get caught in the super glue. It'll make a mess. But we are just about there. Press this in, and we're done. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do so. If you like the new format with the voiceover, let me know in the comments. This is Ranger Made Knives out.